So I've got a talk on D-Trace, and we have a number of D-Trace experts in the room, so I thought it'd be a great idea to give a quick crash course on D-Trace for about half an hour, and then in the remaining time, about half an hour or, or whenever we get kicked out, we'll have a panel. During the presentation, when I talk about D-Trace, this is a good opportunity for you to think about what questions you'd like the panel to answer afterwards. So um, you'll have all the material in front of you. Um, the sort of questions that you may be uh, preparing while I go through this, what sort of problems, observability problems in particular, have you had in the past that you absolutely couldn't solve? Um, and could D-Trace solve them? And th 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 those are sort of good questions to ask us, because um, they're kind of softball questions, because D-Trace probably can answer those, those uh, observability problems. Um, but do think about that during the presentation. So about a half an hour presentation will be pretty quick, and then we'll go through um, some questions. So the presentation I've got here is, um, it would normally go for about two hours. I'm going to do it in about 30 minutes because we have a, a very smart crowd. Uh, this presentation is on the internet, um, but of course we'll get it hooked up with the KCA website properly. And so a D-Trace crash course. Uh, and there's a floating coffee cup for no reason there. This presentation is an introduction to D-Trace, um, part of the D-Trace topics collection, which I've put on solarisinternals.com. And it will quickly go through what D-Trace is, what D-Trace is for, who uses D-Trace, essentials, and usage features. What is D-Trace? So I can talk about what D-Trace is, but um, th this is one of those examples where it's, uh, or one of those scenarios where, where it's best to use an example to show you what D-Trace is. So, and Andre has encouraged me to run some uh, destructive D-Trace. Oh, yes, please. So here's a program uh, that I've never seen work on, on Mac before, but um, I just got it working <laughs> earlier. And it turns the laptop into a noisy typewriter which is great for driving your office workers insane, and has other sound effects. Uh, now, now, now this, this may be sad to confess, but I actually run this at work all the time. Um, whenever I have head, head, well, when I have headphones on, otherwise Brian would kill me. Uh, why don't I just buy a model M? Uh, it's, I, I like the light touch. And if you don't understand why you would listen to this, like every time you're on a computer, try using it for a week and then turn it off. <laughs> and you'll be like, something's wrong. Like the keys aren't working. So your mind just develops this expectation that there'll be noise when you hit keys. And I'm afraid I'm addicted to it. So uh, one of my favorite things is to go to a website. Oh, no, it doesn't work. I'm going to have to fix that. Like I said, I just got it working here. Usually it works for everything, like not just, not just these guys, but websites as well. But uh, there is one other sound effect. A anyone, anyone guess what it's going to be? Yes. <laughs> You're getting close to the end of the line. OK. Great stuff. That's what D-Trace is about. And that concludes my presentation. <laughs> OK, now we've seen D-Trace. Uh, D-Trace is a dynamic troubleshooting and analysis tool first introduced in Solaris 10 and Open Solaris. Um, I'm now running it on Mac OS X, which is great. Uh, it's many things, in particular a tool, a programming language interpreter, an instrumentation framework, and uh, it provides observability across the entire software stack from one tool. It allows you to examine software execution like never before, and um, that's best demonstrated, so I'll go through some things. Uh, and excuse me while I get some water. Uh, although this water seems brown, I'm sure that's fine. Uh, yeah, they, they, they took away the coffee cup, so. Uh. D trace example one tracing new processes system wide. Um, this is a more sensible example to start with. This is a one liner. Um, this is on being run on Solaris. Uh, D trace minus n, syscall exece return. 
uh, trace exec name. What it's doing is it's showing you whatever processes are executed live, and it's printing that out. Um, that was something that was very difficult to do before. Um, in fact, how did you do it before? How did you find out what processes, process names were being executed live? Max knows. Ah, oh, CD slash proc and trust everything. You'll, you'll, and you'll find the shells that are executing things. And TNF. TNF did have, have some stuff to answer it as well. Anyway, it was really difficult. This is much easier because it's just a one-liner. Uh, I haven't run this on Mac OS X for a while, so let's see this run on, on Mac, which will be more exciting. And let me just create a new tab. Ah, feels so good. Okay, let's see if that works all right. That's what I wanted to check. It doesn't actually work. Um, uh, Mac, exec E is just a solaricism, and I just wanted to check whether that existed. Uh, D trace minus N, and then. <laughs> that program needs a, needs a bit of work. D trace minus n and then a, a description like that. Um, minus n means this is going to be the name of a, a probe. Um, and here, and we'll, we'll learn this very rapidly if you don't know it already. Um, Syscall is the name of a provider that's like a library of, of probes. Probe is an event that I can trace of interest. Um, and this is a fortable, and exece would be the name of the system call, and entry is when I start that system call. Exece turns out to be a slaricism. I will use minus l on D trace to find what the real thing is. All right, I'm going to have to turn that off. Uh, something's wrong with my keyboard. Like, it doesn't work anymore. OK, there we go. So I've actually used D trace minus L and um, L to list. I've thrown a star out there because I've guessed it's some other variant of exec, and it's actually called exec VE. So if I run this now without the minus L to list, I'm tracing syscall exec VE entry. Turns out I'm not running any new processes unless I go into another window and type ls. I just ran something. It'll be more interesting if it tells me what it ran. So uh, I'm now putting something in uh, curly braces. Uh, how many people have programmed in awk or nork before? Wow, fantastic. How many people have programmed in Fortran 77 before now? Uh, <laughs> No, Orc and Nork are much newer. How about Intercal? No, no. Uh, I, I have written programs in Intercal. It's on my website. Um, traces is like Echo. Um, since you're so familiar with Orc, Orc lets you run an event uh, when a line matches something, and you, and you put it in these braces. So here I've got the action, which is trace exec name. Trace is just Echo. Exec name is the variable. If I now run ls, then it tells me I just, I just ran the, the, the shell. I thought I ran ls. <laughs> That's because exec is a magical, magical system call that turns something into something else. This is the point of exec. So exec turns a process from um, when you initially fork a process, uh, it will then exec a new binary, so the shell has forked and become ls. I can do them both at the same time just by dropping this. So a blank is a wildcard. So I can see exec for entry. I start off as a point shell or, or bash because I've just uh, forked, and then exec v return. I'm now ls. <laughs> 